So you've just purchased a new laptop or better yet, you've received one as a gift and you wanna test it thoroughly. Well, today I'm gonna to walk you through a set of tests to ensure your laptop is good and not a lemon. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up. These videos take a long time to make and it certainly motivates me to create more of them for you. Most of this guide can be applied to both a Windows laptop and a Mac, but as I'll be demoing on a Windows PC, where there are alternatives to run on the Mac operating system, I will post that in the description below. First, you wanna check the configuration in your laptop to ensure that you got the right components that you ordered. Open the task manager by pressing Windows and the X key together. Ensure that you are in more details mode. On the performance tab, check that the CPU is the one you bought and on the memory tab that you have the correct amount of RAM installed shown on the top right of the screen. You'll also want to ensure it's dual channel for the fastest performance, which you should see a two in the slots area. Next, check you have the right amount of storage by clicking on the disk tab. Don't worry if the storage doesn't equal one terabyte, 512 gig, etc. exactly. This is normal in this view, just make sure it's close. If you purchase the laptop with dedicated graphics, you should see two GPUs listed. Click on the second and ensure it's the graphics that you purchased. Let's check that the display is working. Firstly, we're gonna check all the pixels and to do that, we're gonna perform a dead pixel test. So what I'd like you to do is in a dimly lit room, go to the link that I'm posting in the description below. Follow the instructions to set your browser to full screen mode, normally by pressing the F11 key. Each time you test, ensure that the entire screen displays the appropriate color smoothly across the panel without any erroneous pixels. Now let's check backlight bleed. This test needs to be performed in a dark room, preferably at night. On the same website, choose the black option and set it to full screen. Then turn off all the lights and look whether there is any light bleed coming in from the corners. Here is an example of a laptop with bad light bleed. This issue may bug you if you watch movies in a dark room in letterbox mode where there's those black bars above and below the movies because that light bleed seeps through. Now let's check how your laptop's display performs in a bright room because we don't want it to be too distracting with all the reflections coming off the screen. So during the day, take your laptop over to a window and facing the window, just fire up Office or Chrome and browse around for a couple of minutes to see are the reflections too bad. Keyboard, this is an easy one. Open a Word, text document, or email and press each key to ensure it registers and the right character or symbol appears on screen. Check that the backlight works and in particular that the secondary function keys light up. It will annoy you if operating the laptop in a dark room or at night if they don't. To test the trackpad, you can try playing a mouse accuracy game like the one at mouseaccuracy.com, link in the description below. Look very carefully around the laptop in a bright room to make sure there are no dents or scuffs on it. Run your finger very gently along the corners and edges to ensure they aren't too sharp. Place the laptop on a flat surface and push down gently on each corner to check it doesn't wobble. Open and close the lid a couple of times to make sure it's sturdy. Before starting the next round of tests, it's important that your laptop is updated to the latest version of Windows and the latest drivers, especially the latest graphics card driver if you have a dedicated graphics card. If you don't know how to do this, there are plenty of guides online with help on how to do it, or you could just call your laptop manufacturer. Audio, choose a track you like and just play it at full volume. Make sure your speakers get loud enough and are high quality enough for you. If you plan to use the laptop on the couch or sitting up in bed, just make sure you rerun those audio tests because many laptops like this one have downward facing speakers and you'll notice a significant drop in audio quality and volume. Plug in headphones and a mic if you plan to use either of these with your laptop and check that it works. Fan noise and coil whine. To test fan noise, I would advise you download Cinebench R20 and run it several times in a quiet room. While it's running, listen carefully to the fan noise to make sure it's not too loud for you. And what I'd strongly advise you do is place your ear close to the fan vents here to ensure that the noise isn't too high pitched. High pitched noises, even at low volumes, can be far more annoying than a loud fan that doesn't have a high pitch. It sounds like a mosquito buzzing around and it's really distracting. To test coil wine while Cinebench is running, place your ear close to the keyboard deck just to ensure you don't hear electrical static or pops. That's coil wine and you don't want that. Lastly, leave the laptop open and turned on with not much running on it. Over the next couple of minutes, see if you can hear the fans coming on or worse still, the fans coming on and off. That's called pulsating. Both of these two things can be really annoying and distracting, especially if you plan to use the laptop in meeting rooms like at work. 
Now test that the same doesn't happen while on battery power. CPU temperature test. Download hardware info and navigate to the sensor area. Scroll to where you see CPU core temperatures. There is normally a row for each core. Press the reset button and rerun Cinebench R20. Ideally, you don't want to see temperatures above 90 degrees for any sustained period of time. If you do, try undervolting your CPU and rerunning. There are many guides on how to do this online. I'll put one in the description below. GPU. Fire up your favorite game to see what frames per second you get. Different games have alternate methods of measuring this. What I'd recommend you do is install MSI Afterburner. It has an excellent way of monitoring your frames per second. If you are using MSI Afterburner to measure FPS, it can be a bit finicky to get going. Here's how you do it. Go to their website and scroll down till you see the Afterburner download. Install it and the Reva software it will also install during the process. After running Afterburner, click on the gear icon. In the monitoring tab, scroll down till you see frame rate and ticket. Then, while frame rate is selected, tick the show in on-screen display box and click OK. While the game is running, ensure your frames are what you expect them to be and there are no noticeable drops. If you are wondering what they should be, look up your graphics card on notebookcheck.net. They have an excellent database of results, including average FPS in most games. Link below. If you do game or perform any heavy duty application work, just how comfortable is the laptop to use when under load? I personally don't perform combined GPU and CPU stress tests because I find them a little unrealistic. Instead, fire up an application or game that you would normally use, run it for about 30 minutes to see how hot is the palm rest and how warm is the keyboard area. Is it too uncomfortable for you to use? Webcam. Launch the camera app on your laptop to check that the quality is acceptable. And if you want to test audio, just place a video call to a friend. Battery life. Easy one here. Ensure the laptop is fully charged, then unplug the laptop and use it for about 10 to 30 minutes doing tasks you would normally do on battery power. Ensure that it doesn't drain more than you would expect. Ports. For the ports you plan to use, plug in your peripherals and check they work. There are certainly more advanced tests that you can run, such as latency mod to check audio latency. But the tests I've just walked you through are thorough enough to check that your laptop is working well. If you can live with the issues you find is really up to you. But if there are issues that you find that can be fixed with a replacement unit like dead pixels on the screen, then I'd suggest you get that replacement unit. And if they can't be fixed and they really do bother you, you gotta look at returning the laptop and getting a different laptop. Anyway, folks, if you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell as there are more videos coming. Also, make sure to hit the thumbs up as I'd greatly appreciate it. Best of luck with your new laptop. I hope it works out really well for you. Till next time, I'll catch you later.